is not unchanging. It is in process, like the tides it creates. It arcs through the skies and accepts its phases. It celebrates its fullness in each of our soul's creations. All right, hold on, pause. Anybody notice that uh, her talent is not up here? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought maybe we should let Zach get in place before we start. Nate, you are like super observant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever said that about me before in my life. <laughs> All right, let's take Nate, it from the top. Nate, you take are it super from the top. observant. Take it from the top. Here let's, we go. Let's go ahead and let Zach finish tuning up first. Oh, okay. All right. We're not in a panic here. Thanks for joining us today. Any of you who are uh, online, we're streaming live from our Facebook page. And uh, we want to thank the Marshall County Community Foundation for helping us out. We just recently got a, a lovely grant from them to work on our switching room. How cool is that? Now, all right, let's do it. The moon is not unchanging. It is in process, like the tides it creates. It arcs through the skies and accepts its phases. It celebrates its fullness in each of our soul's creations. In every life, some rain must fall, and you'll get wet as your sorrow calls, or the sun will rise. On a brand new morn, you'll be warm and dry, and freshly born. Support from Marshall County Community Foundation, Marshall County Tourism, and Judith Robert and Tom Kapazinskis. From historic downtown Plymouth, Indiana, where the Lincoln Highway and Michigan Road across the banks of the beautiful Yellow River, it's the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Tonight we have a new show inspired by Holman's Happy Hand Sanitizer. Remember, if you want happy hands, try Holman's tonight. We guarantee your hands will feel brighter and lighter. At Holman's, we say, happy hands, happy heart. Holman's is the sanitizer that makes happy hands smart. Featured tonight in our clinically sealed ultraviolet interview studio will be country singer-songwriter and surgeon-to-be, Zach Dubois. Along with us tonight is our very own resident composer and harpist, Cindy Boner. Plus, we have a poem by the 15th century poet Kabir, as read by Cindy Davis, and a statement on poetry by our host. And of course, there's me, your announcer, Jacob Moreno, along with our very own one-man band, Lightning John Baylor. <laughs> And now, recorded live from the Wild Rose Moon Performing Arts Center, where over 150 years of creative commerce have enlightened the bricks, mortar, poplar beams, and woodwork, where people hung out every window and doorway to hear William Jennings Bryan give his Cross of Gold speech in the street in 1896, where the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour is recorded. Here's the radical rascal of all things lunar, or lunatic, your radio hour host, George Tricker. Well, thank you so much, thank you. Miller goes round, round the bend. The river goes round, round, round till the very end. And when it stops, it starts again. You won't be alone. Round. It won't be long till the river goes round and round and round, my friend. Okay, well, thank you so much. It's great to be here with Jacob Moreno. Hey, Jacob, how are you doing these I'm, days? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you haven't. Life is treating you well. Yeah. Great weather, right? Oh, absolutely. Now. All right. Have you noticed that the leaves have almost all fallen off the trees? 
Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. But it's just gorgeous. Don't you love the sound of the leaves when you kind of scoot your feet through them? And yeah. It makes that sound. And the way they like crinkle in the wind. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, it's so great to have you. We have an exciting show planned tonight, and, uh, and you're an integral part of it. You come in uh, to the moon uh, not too long ago. What, what, what number of show is this? Is this your um, third show or fourth show? I believe show? it's the fourth show. Fourth show. Okay. Well, it's great to have you, and you've you've really enlivened our spirits by your presence. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, we have a very special guest with us tonight, and his name is Zach Du Bois, and I'm so pleased he's here. Um, Actually, Nate Butler, our sound engineer, told me about Zach, and so I'm very pleased to have you. Uh, are, are, are you enjoying your uh, first trip to the Wild Rose Moon? Absolutely. This is a uh, this is quite an, an, an event center, um, upstairs and downstairs. I I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I <laughs> showed up, and it's beautiful, man. It is. It's incredible what you've done here, and, and hearing about the history of it, it's really cool. Well, thank you. It's a big team. That uh, achieves all this, and, and they have such great hearts. Well, listen, tell me a little bit about yourself. Now, you're from Elkhart, Indiana, originally. That is correct. Yeah, from and, Elkhart, born and raised. And um, so, uh, right there on the Elkhart River, were you were you born near the river, or? Unfortunately, I was not. Um, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, I was born in South Bend, uh, oh. in Memorial Hospital, which is along the St. Joe River. I think, right. So, right. So yeah. there's that. But yeah. but no, unfortunately, I. My they didn't put you in a basket, basket or anything and What's that? float you down the river. No, no, no Moses story going no, on. No. <laughs> but so, uh, tell me about uh, growing up in Elkhart. Uh, what? Where'd you go to school? Yeah, so my my family has some land on the north side of town, um, and that's where I was I was born and, and raised. And um, our, our land actually backs up to the Michigan state line, so our our, our land is right up there. But um, I went to Jimtown High School. Um, where, Jim Town, where sure. my dad was uh, the principal and then superintendent. So they played basketball there. Yeah, they played basketball, football. Yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and when did you? Were you? Is that where you got the musical bug when you were younger, or did your was your family musical? What, what yeah, so my mom used to do the music at, at the church we went to, St. Thomas and Elkhart, and yeah. so she used to do that. So we always grew up. Um, musically inclined, and I took piano lessons, but I always played sports growing up, and so I, I was never, never thought I'd one day really get into music. But before my uh, senior year of high school, I was a quarterback on the football team. We just won state the year before, and um, wow, I ended up finding out that I had a bilateral stress fracture in my back, and I also got mono, and so I couldn't, couldn't participate in two a days. Um, in, in the summer and couldn't really play that year. So I had a bunch of free time on my hands and I, I figured I better do something productive with that time. And so I picked up guitar and started teaching myself how to play. I, I'd always written poetry and so um, I was like, you know, I'm getting ready to go to college. I think guitar would be a pretty good thing to pick up is, is uh, you go to your dorm and you're gonna have a lot of free time there as well, so. Well, tell me a little bit about this writing of poetry. You know, we're going to be doing some poems later on in the program today, and so this is a very appropriate segue to our our, uh, our work later. What kind of poems were you writing, and when did you start? Uh, you know, I started when I was in grade school, and yeah. just you know, we'd get assigned, oh, you have to write such and such poem, and so I I always enjoyed it, and I was pretty good at it, I thought, and so I think in fourth grade we had this you know, poetry thing, we were, we had to write a poetry assignment, and then, I don't ever told this story, actually, either, so this is, this is interesting, uh, but yeah, so we had this poetry assignment, and, um, and I, you know, I was a fourth or fifth grade or whatever, and so we, we wrote it, and then submitted it off to this national anthology of poetry, you know, our teacher was like, oh, hopefully somebody will get accepted, and my poem actually got accepted oh. into the national anthology of poetry for... I think it's for, you know, grade school and, and high school kids, but yeah, so that was a pretty, pretty cool thing early on to see that, you yeah. know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed writing and it's yeah. really well received as well, so. Could you recite that? I, I, <laughs> it was something about friends, being friends to the end, and it was about death. I was, I, was, I read a lot of Edgar Allan Poe as a little kid, oh, yeah, yeah. kind of dark stuff, so <laughs> it was about death, and it was very That's, somber. Well, it's, it's interesting, I'm going to just make this quick commercial for the next, uh, episode of the radio show uh, uh, because 
Lou Ann Holman, the storyteller, is coming over from Akron, uh, Indiana, and she does a one-person show in which she plays Edgar Allan Poe. Really? Yeah, so she's very steeped in him, um, so you might enjoy listening to that I show. Would, that but now we'd like to listen to you on that beautiful guitar you've got there. That's. Do you have a story behind that guitar? So this guitar, I, when, I, I didn't have this originally. Um, when I first started playing, I had a, a junky Yamaha that um, did serve its purpose of teaching me how to play. And so when I was an undergrad, I went to the University of Notre Dame, so when I was an undergrad there, um, uh, I saved up some money and actually found this guitar on eBay <laughs> and, and uh, bought this on eBay back before Amazon I think even existed or anything like that and so um, so yeah I've had this guitar with me now for oh, I don't know 12 years I believe and it's a great great Martin guitar I, you, I love it they make wonderful guitars they do, yeah um, so could you do a song for us and tell us a little bit about it absolutely so this song it's, it's called Bleed Red and um, Given everything that's going on in the world, I think it's it's a song that um, that, that needs to be shared, and, and people need to hear the message um, about how we're all connected. Everybody. Somebody from somewhere, everybody knows somebody could be from anywhere. Yeah. Roots connect to mine. 
Yeah, that's so great. And, and I love thinking too about uh, how, um, you know, you're a medical, stu medical student, right? That's correct. And uh, so you, th you think about the veins and you, in our hands and stuff, and then you look at the roots of trees. And the, I, I heard some uh, echo philosopher talk once about how, you know, water shapes so much of, of the biological life and the principles of water. And so you see those principles in our veins, and you see them in the roots. And so I love those connections that you make in the song. It's just Absolutely. great. Yeah, yeah super. Um, well, uh, let me let me start in on this journey of your albums. You have three albums. Uh, they look very interesting. I haven't listened to all of them. I listened to that song actually, but. Um, what uh, what did, what about your first album? How did that come finally come to be born? Yeah, so my first album it's called Destination Unknown, and I graduated from the University of Notre Dame in 2011. And when I was an undergrad, I um, you know thought I was going to go to medical school right after uh, right after undergrad. Um, however, I really got into songwriting during during um, my college years and. During my senior year, I took an entrepreneurship class actually, and we had to write a business plan for a you know venture we wanted to start after undergrad. And so I decided that I would try to write a business plan and run a feasibility analysis of being a full-time touring singer-songwriter. And um, you know, I kind of had a eureka moment while I was working on that. That you know, that's what I really wanted to do at the time, and so I could actually feasibly you know do that right out of right out of school. Um, and you know, make money and potentially support myself financially doing that. And so, I came up with a plan and, and kind of put that plan into action as soon as I graduated and, and toured. I, I played, I think, I'm, I'm not sure how many shows um, that first year, but played all the way from Minnesota down to Florida. Um, you know, playing for sometimes two people in a room. I, I remember one night in Madison, Wisconsin, I was playing on a Tuesday night and it was snowing in the middle of April, and um, two people came out to the show um, and. But the cool thing, you know, I was really down about it, but after the show, they, um, the people came up to me and said, you know, we, we drove like 30 minutes to come and see you here in this, in this bad weather. And so I was like, all right, this, you know, there might be something here to this. Because I had been putting stuff out on YouTube. It was the early days of YouTube and I had kind of been building a following that way. And so I, I did that first tour and, and uh, gathered a bunch of emails. My whole goal for that tour was to gather a bunch of email addresses so I could um, do a, Pledge music campaign to try to fund an album, and so I was able to gather however many thousand email addresses over the course of that spring, and um, eventually funded that album through the generosity of, of everyone that was <laughs> I, I gathered email addresses from from wanting to support the project. So, so maybe you should have your own how-to book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely read a lot and, yeah. and uh, tried to talk to as many people in the industry as, as I could. And if you you know are willing to kind of think creatively outside the box and, and work really hard, um, you know, you're able to accomplish a lot of things. Well, I would like to hear another song. Yeah. Um, and tell me the story behind it. Yeah, so I guess uh, we were talking about, you know, traveling around the country playing music, and um, that was really my life for the, the past seven years um, before I started medical school, um, my time between Notre Dame and medical school. And, and this is kind of a, an autobiographical song uh, about, about that. And, kind of what life is like out on the road. And it's called Life on the Road. <laughs> Crowd. Well, that's the best kind of pay. 
Chasing a dream, well, it's good for your soul. So I chase it night and day. Yeah, I travel across this land in a beat up van, just trying to find my way. I keep rolling, I let the rhythm carry me. Live my life nowhere, nothing is guaranteed. But if I keep going, yeah, I might find what I'm searching for. I'm holding out hope, living this life out on the road. I sleep on my friends' couches that make more money than me. Sometimes I'm jealous of their houses, but they're jealous that I'm free. And I'm no good at one night stands, so I lie awake alone, just reflecting on this path that I chose, praying about the unknown. I keep rolling. If I keep going, yeah, I might find what I'm searching for. I'm holding out hope, living this life out on the road. Yeah. Well, I'm holding out Beat up paperback sitting on my dresser Louis Moore and Jack Kerouac My companions on this journey Their words, they guide my path Well for now I got my thing In the green hills of Tennessee I'm seeking truth in these guitar strings See how far These songs will carry me well, How far will they carry me?
Well, welcome back to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. We're here with Cindy Boner and her beautiful harp. My gosh, that's a gorgeous harp. You've got, looks like some Celtic symbol down here and a, a tree with the roots. We were talking about trees and roots and veins and the principles of water are all right there on your... It yeah. is. Yeah, you got the Celtic knock and you've got the, the tree of life. And, yeah. oh. This is Sophia Jane, my, my newest um, harp. Yeah. And got it from a lovely lady in Ohio named Jane Thurman. She'd already named the harp Sophia, so I just added the second name because I was so pleased. Just beautiful. I wish the people at home could see the uh, beautiful veining in the, uh, the wood. Um, they can. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> they can with Amiibo, which is absolutely, and see the design down here too. Well, uh, Cindy, um, uh, you were telling a story last night on our show. We have a, we do a show here called Moonlight, and it's an interview program with local and regional artists, and sometimes we get an artist from far away too. But uh, you were telling a story about the very beginnings of your attraction to music that fascinated me. And can you recount that? Because it was so, such a great story. Sure. Uh, my first memory of music is when my grandma, I grew up in Virginia in a very small, um, lightly populated area. And there's a small town there called Calio. And my grandma had taken me there, and I was quite young, maybe five, um, to see a parade. And I had no idea what a parade was. And grandma's trying to explain to me that you know, there's, there's things that come and you look at it. And, I'm really confused. And then we get there, and I'm standing, and I'm watching. There's these cars, and there's these big floats. And I'm like, oh, OK. But then I heard this sound. And the first thing I can recall hearing is this thumping. And it just was very exciting. And it was, I was like, oh, what is this? What is this? And then I could hear the trumpets. And it was this, the band was coming. And it was just this remarkable, beautiful sound I had never heard before. And I said, it just kind of filled me up. And I knew that I wanted more of it. And as the band passed, I took off after him, and Grandma had to grab me back. <laughs> but I, I just wanted, I just wanted to follow it. It was so fascinating to me. I just, I, I couldn't, couldn't hold the excitement back. I guess that's such a beautiful so, story. Yeah, I just love wonderful. the way. And children so often have a, a natural attraction to that one which they love, you yeah, know, yeah. and they just. Uh, go intuitively right go toward it. So that's it. That's why I love that. Well, tell us a little bit about the piece you're going to play for us. Okay, today. Well, actually, I'm going to play an arrangement that I did. I love arranging traditional tunes. Yeah. This tune took me a very long time to arrange because I was actually afraid to try it because I love the tune so much. Okay. It's very dear to me. It reminds me of my of my home in Virginia. It's Oshenandoa. Everybody knows it. Yeah. But it's such a lovely tune, and I did a little bit of. Um, Oh, I don't know, maybe a fantasy on it or whatever. I mean, you'll recognize it for sure, but I, I didn't just stick to the, to the tune. But um, because of the personal connection, I have my fond memories of Virginia and the Shenandoah Valley. It took me quite a while to actually work on it to get an arrangement on it. Aren't songs wonderful? They the touch something so deep in you, or they at do. least they, they do me. Um, and even you know the words are, are beautiful, but it's it's the melody that, that got me. It's right. just a very simple, but it, it's it's quite beautiful. It is, and and very empathetic. Yeah. So give us some Shenandoah. Sure. Thank you. 
How lovely. Just beautiful. Thank you so much, Cindy. I really appreciate it. It oh, does. yeah, another <laughs> river seems to be a theme today. Well, let's see if we can somehow, th maybe we'll keep the theme going because we're going to talk to Cindy Davis, our, our resident PhD and also from Notre Dame. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, we have kind of a Notre Dame. Now, that's a school somewhat close to here, right? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not too far from us. On a, no. uh, on, on a different river, as mentioned. 2,000 miles Saint away. Joe. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're going to do a poem by Kabir. Yes, I am. And he was... A 15th century Sufi poet. The Sufis were uh, ecstatic, uh, mystical Muslims. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he was from India. Right, in also influenced by Hinduism, too. Uh, yes, it's, yeah. uh, he was sort of between the two. Kind of walked yeah. The, yeah, got yeah. himself into some trouble that way, I think. Big trouble. Yeah. yeah. We always get in trouble with religion, don't we? Oh, especially when we build bridges. <laughs> oh, whenever, boy. Whenever there's somebody who wants to build bridges between religious traditions, all of a sudden... You just got to watch out for that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we all bleed red, don't we? We all bleed... So, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so why uh, don't you read this poem for well, us? Well, I, I noticed, oh. actually, I, I think I sent this message over to John Baylor mentally that I, we were talking about rivers today. I'm sure I sent it to you, John, <laughs> mentally, you know. Anyway, I'm going to add rivers in here because okay. I just want to do it. So just when you do hear it. Rivers, I think it's Kabir would approve. Okay. And, yeah. and uh, we, I don't know, maybe perhaps, perhaps we'll receive a sign. We will um, have a sign. And uh, uh, Cindy's going to accompany you, right? Thank you. All right, here we go. Consciousness is uh, awakening for uh, Kabir and other Sufis. Okay. Between the conscious and the unconscious, the mind has put up a swing. All earth creatures, even the supernovas, sway between these two trees and it never winds down. Angels, animals, humans, insects by the million, also the wheeling sun and moon. Ages go by and it goes on like a river. Everything is swinging. Heaven, earth, water, fire, and the secret one slowly growing a body. Kabir saw that for 15 seconds, and it made him a servant for life. It's beautiful. What a beautiful poem. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I I'm inspired by when Kabir, and I think about the transcendentalists, the American transcendentalists, who were influenced by so much of this. You know, they were influenced by Tagore and, and the stuff that he was doing and, and all kinds of interesting translations from the East. And they were uh, beginning to integrate that into their literature and their, their ideas and that sense of uh, uh, finding uh, unity in nature and in also in our own natures. The, and here we're talking about the unconscious and the conscious. So many years ago, I penned a poem that was sort of in the, back I was reading a person like Charles Olson who wrote a thing on ch projective verse. He wrote kind of a statement on that. Uh, Ezra Pound wrote a statement on poetry and uh, Marcel Duchamp wrote the Surrealist Manifesto. And I'd read all those and I thought, I want to say something about the poem in a way that uh, is clearly in line with, I think, what the, how the transcendentalists might think. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. The poem is an event complex of being. Being is risking. The poem is the name we use to describe the edge. It is onrushing. It crushes all forms. It eats systems and builds bridges and destroys evil. The earth is one center, the universe another. The poem is a seed from which we spring our consciousness into cosmos. 
The poem is the flower, is the nerve extending. The poem is not words on a page. The poem is a vibration of freedom, a new breath, an intake of the soul, a twist of space out of time. The poem is an event complex of being. The poem is a wave, the electrical impulse of our living. The poem is a floating construct. Its truth lies in flux. The poem serves as a transportational device whose end is never known. The poem is an extension of dimension. The poem is the metasphere. The poem is om. The poem is the dance of the dervish, the beat of an insect heart. The poem is not being. Being is where we start. The poem is before and after that. The poem is the long yawning story of my neighbor or the dance of the Chippewa. The poem takes no form that can be described. The poem starts its voice inside of all of us as a mirror. If we're lucky, the glass shatters. The poem does not know time, nor have they ever been introduced. At times, I am the poem. I am the poem for you if you want me to. You be the poem then too, won't you? Now, now we have a, a couple other poems by Kabir we'd like to do, right? And th These are also about consciousness, a little yeah. bit like what you're talking about. Right. Um, Consciousness for Kabir was about waking up. Waking not, up, Not right. being asleep, not uh, staying in old patterns of, uh, uh, of thought. Friend, wake up. Why do you go on sleeping? The night is over. What do you want to lose the day the same way? Other women who managed to get up early have already found an elephant or a jewel. So much was lost already while you slept, and that was so unnecessary. The one who loves you understood, but you did not. You forgot to make a place in your bed next to you. Instead, you spent your life playing. In your 20s, you did not grow because you did not know who your Lord was. Wake up, wake up. There's no one in your bed. He left you during the long night. Kabir says, the only woman awake is the woman who has heard the flute. And the other one is, my inside, listen to me. The great spirit, the teacher is near. Wake up, wake up, run to his feet. He is standing close to your head right now. You have slept for millions and millions of years why not wake up this morning? Very good. And you know, it's appropriate that we record this program that often plays at night in the morning. So that's, that's beautiful. Those are great poems and those are great ideas, I think. That we're, so wonderful, wonderful work. Anyway, well, coming up next, we'll be back with more Zach. Dubois, Dubois, excuse me, singer, songwriter, and medical student from Elkhart, Indiana. Bazinskis, Marshall County Community Foundation, Marshall County Tourism, and the Friends of the Wild Rose Moon. You're listening to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour.
Welcome back to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Um, we're here with Zach Du Bois, and he will be here in just a second. But before we do that, um, Jacob, I believe I'll let your mellifluous vocal cords do the honor for this little next segment we're going to do. Happy to do that. And now, cue the jungle drums, ta 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 ra, the timpanies, and begin the begin. It's that moment when Nate Butler, our audio engineer and technical producer, expounds on heady and oft, or not so oft, whimsical meanderings. There's nothing so profound or great as a moment with Nate. Oh, uh, Nate. Yes, George. Uh, it's so nice to see you, although you're gradually disappearing. Yeah. Uh, with it, you've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? Yeah, although I did manage to eat a couple of donuts on the way to work. <laughs> I know. So. And there are donuts here, too. I'm and already I, breaking my... Uh, well, I, w I was happy to bring that up, actually, because I, I noticed uh, we used to talk a lot about my breakfast. Yes, I know. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Um, so... Another thing that we used to talk about, do you remember a while back when I, I would, uh, really uh, became enthused about oscilloscopes? I guess I remember that. Uh, I, 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 was, yeah. I was really... Oh, uh, that's right, oscilloscopes. It was the door-to-door -door plan. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. sell and, oscilloscopes door-to-door. -door. sales that's have right. been a little lackluster. Yes. So yeah, I've, got a, I've got a new plan. I, I think you heard me... Uh, using the, uh, the measurement mic at a perpendicular angle to the, uh, the sound reproduction system this morning, and I was using a pink noise generator, what? and I'm on to it. Did you say that, pink noise? Yeah, pink noise. That's what every household in America needs. I could not see any pink when it was on. I, I looked, but I didn't see any. Was it in the air? Uh, yes. Okay. So... I don't know what to, I, maybe you need a... It's okay. Go ahead. Go tests, ahead. I don't or, want to interrupt your train of thought. Oh, uh, well, with, the, the train is wrecked. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you use the pink noise generator. Yeah, and I, I really do think that, uh, you know, in these trying times in America, that's really going to help a lot of people out. Get if, a pink if we noise applied, generator in their house. Oh, use that in the house. Yeah. And then that would enable them to attune the, their... Mm -hmm. Yeah, their walls calibrate, their, recalibrate, recalibrate, recalibrate. That's what we all need to do is recalibrate. That's good. Well, give uh, Nate a great hand uh, for that. Thank you, George. Moment of wisdom. And that was a moment with Nate. Yeah. Uh, all right, Zach. Zach Du Bois, well, let's get back to your work. Um, what, uh, did, we talked a little bit about your guitar playing and picking that up. Tell me a little bit about your work in Nashville, because you were, you were in Nashville for a while, right? Yeah, I was. Um, kind of off and on from the time I graduated from undergrad until medical school, I was living in Nashville. And um, it's a really great community of creatives, and especially for songwriters, um, you know, it's a place where a lot of people move to, you know, chase that dream. And, and so it, there's a great energy there, a creative energy. And it was a lot of fun in Nashville. Um, you know, I, would, I, I wrote a lot of songs there um, and, and made a lot of connections. And I, it's funny, I have a lot of friends now that have, you know, number one songs on country music radio and, and people both as songwriters and artists. And, and uh, I, I just had a really great great experience in Nashville, and it's it's a, a fun place to create. Um, and I learned a lot about songwriting there. Uh, one of the things I learned was that you really have to show up every day. Sometimes, if you want to be a creative, um, you, you show up every day to be inspired. Um, some days I, you know, would show up. I'd write with other people and didn't think I was going to get anything good. And you know you kick around some ideas and after 30 minutes you're you're onto something really special and you just never know when that that moment's going to strike um before i moved to nashville i kind of only wrote whenever i was inspired to write and you know that's one strategy and i don't think that's wrong and, and then there's the other strategy that i learned in nashville was that you just 
get up every day and you do your creative endeavor and sometimes you don't get anything worthwhile and, and sometimes you get this really special thing and the feeling at the beginning of the day that I kind of learned with like you know didn't really dictate that for the most part um so 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 yeah it was it was a great place I, I enjoyed it and um it, it's funny I now that I'm in medical school and not doing music full-time anymore I, I wondered if I would be jealous of my friends that are, are down there still that are still writing songs and you know having success on on the radio and, and having these number one songs and uh, you know I wondered if I would be jealous of them when I was in medical school you know um not doing that anymore but I, I, I found which I'm really excited about is that I'm not jealous at all and I'm just happy for them genuinely happy because I know how much of a grind it is and in and, and what all goes into it and so um just so so excited for all of them and, and, and all their success and it's it's fun we ha had this peer group that kind of we all moved to Nashville at the same time and you rise the ranks together and and um you kind of become the new guard and, and so it's it's really fun to see some of my friends that are becoming the new guard uh you know as, as far as country country music goes yeah i think it's and I, I love your description of that because uh i think there is a way in which creative people you know they start out and they want a certain kind of recognition for themselves and that you know that's important but i think you reach a point as a creative person too where you learn how to celebrate the uh, you know the successes of others, and Absolutely. when you do that, it takes you to a new sort of level. I think in terms of your understanding of the creative process. Yeah, and for me, it was never. You know, I never want, got into songwriting to be to, to get rich or you know become yeah. famous. I never actually wanted any of that. You know, I just wanted to support myself doing something that I loved, and I was fortunate enough to do that for seven years. And now I'm moving into a new season of life. But the great thing about music and the creative process is that you know it's a lifelong endeavor and and doesn't matter what you're doing for your you know quote unquote you know day job it, you know if if creating is something that you want to do you can always find time to to create and have that be a part of your life and i think that's something that's really special about music um poetry you know whatever your creative outlet is woodworking i, I enjoy woodworking and it's yeah. you know it's all the same you know, well process. share with us one of your creations here because we've really enjoyed your uh your song so far it's been such a lovely experience well since you said this it has been a lovely experience i i figured we might take a left turn here um I, I've been fortunate enough to travel around a lot of the, the world, and one of my favorite places to go is Paris, France, and we were kind of talking before the show about Paris and, and um, how lovely it is and a great city it is. It's the city of light and the city of love, and um, I, I was fortunate enough to go there with a girl I was dating at the time, and you know, you think Paris is the most romantic city in the world. There's no way that you can screw up a, a romantic getaway to Paris. I learned that there is a way that you can screw up a romantic getaway to Paris, and the way you do that is you drink too much wine at dinner, continue to drink too much wine at a corner cafe after dinner, and then you get into a disagreement, a minor disagreement, and she she uh, might leave you at your table to walk back to your Air her Airbnb. And um, when you're faced with a, a situation like that, there's two options you have. The first is you can chase her through the streets of Paris and make sure she gets back to the Airbnb okay because she doesn't speak any French. Um, or you can sit at the table and finish the half craft of wine that's still left. And I decided to do the latter and pulled out my iPhone and, and uh, made a note to, uh, <laughs> to, to write a breakup song about Paris because I'd never heard a breakup song about Paris. I've heard a lot of love songs about Paris, but I've never heard a breakup song about Paris. So this is, uh, this is my breakup song for Paris. Fortunately for me, we didn't actually break up and I ended up getting married to my now wife. We actually um, traveled back to Paris the next year and got engaged in Paris. And, and, um, and so the narrator of the song was not as lucky as I was, though. This is, uh, this is Paris is for Lovers. Well, I woke up ass naked in a hurricane of clothes on the third floor of a hostel where no one knows my name except the front desk and they have my credit card i need to get dressed and go get it so i can get to getting far away from this goddamn place on 
the boulevard, Saint Germain. Yeah, Paris, well, it's for lovers, and I don't have a lover anymore. She's in the arms of another, and I'm hungover. I sure as hell don't belong in Paris Oh, but I'm in Paris My head feels like a building dancing with a wrecking ball I've got a soft pack full of cigarettes and Time to walk all alone along the left bank while she paints Mona Lisa smile with some acrylic canvas poet hell. When I leave, I'm never coming back to Paris. Cause it's for lovers, and I don't have a lover anymore. She's in the arms of another, and I'm hungover. I sure as hell don't belong. In Paris Oh, but I'm in Paris Sure ain't the picture painted in my mind I'm on a bench on the charm tomorrow With a homeless guy And a bottle of wine Cause Paris is for lovers And I don't have a lover anymore She's in the arms of another And I'm hungover I sure as hell don't belong in Paris Oh, but I'm in Paris Caught a ride inside a big bird I'm heading back across the pond And all that I've got left to say is Kiss my ass And au revoir La da, la da, 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 la da La da 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 Yeah, I could hear that sort of street band playing la da 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 da. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any yeah. good breakup song does? There's some lot lots of da's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got gotta have that. Anyway, well, songs are such a great way to process our emotions and and to make sense of them, and I, they bring us uh, different kinds of truths. I love that Kabir piece because it talks about the swing between the conscious and the unconscious world, and I think that. And a lot of times songs sort of come out of our unconscious and they're a way that our unconscious can speak to us uh, in, in, a, in a way in which it helps us to grow, you know, to be able to see and let out emotions and, and, and in a very healthy way, I think. Yeah, one of my, one of my favorite artists, uh, Dirk Spentley, he said that um, songwriting, and especially country music songwriting, is the greatest shrink money can buy. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, tell me about medical school. Where are you in uh, studying medical school? Yeah, so I'm in my third year now at uh, Marion University's College of yeah. Osteopathic Medicine down in Indianapolis. And I'm actually um, in my clinical rotations. The first two years of medical school, you spend doing classwork. And then your last two years, you're in clinics and in, in the hospital, actually getting to finally practice some of the medicine that you've been learning. And so I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, to be doing most of my clinical rotations actually back home in, in Elkhart County. I'm, I moved into Goshen with my wife during COVID. Um, once, once all that kind of went down, we decided to move from Indianapolis back, back home. And um, so it's really nice. I'm working right now at Goshen Hospital, which is great. Uh, with surgical yeah. oncologists and um, 
getting to see all sorts of fun and, and cool things. And Goshen is such a lovely community for it young is. people. It's got lots going on. You've got the cafe there. Uh, uh, and uh, and I think Nate's from Goshen, aren't you, Nate? Absolutely, Nate? yeah. You have your studio there, I believe, Nimble Wit Productions. He does. Right? Right? It's in the, the basement of Ignition Garage, another great... Yeah, place. I know. Uh, unbelievable place that, that Nate has been intimately involved with. Yep. We're so lucky to have him over this way and his expertise. Well, that's terrific. I'd like you to do uh, one last song for us, if you could, and um, and introduce that as well. Tell us the story behind it. Yeah, so I actually wasn't planning on playing this song, but being a part of the show and kind of having the outlet to kind of talk about songs and, and the creative process, I, this is something that I'm just kind of inspired to do right now. This a song called Pray for Rain, and uh, I, I met this guy down in Nashville. His name was was Lupe, and um, we had a mutual friend who Lupe did some, some odd jobs around the house for, and... Um, after I'd met Lupe a couple times, I finally got to, to talk to him and learn his story. And I learned that he um, had crossed the border twice um, in or from Mexico to get to the United States. And hearing about his story, the, the second time he crossed, actually, I think um, half the people in his party um, disappeared or, or didn't, didn't make it across the border that he knows of. And so... Um, hearing his story and what he's done to kind of come to the United States to chase his American dream. Um, I wanted to share his story and kind of, I, at the time I was reading John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath and, and I noticed a lot of correlations between the Joads um, traveling west um, during the, the Great Depression and Dust Bowl and, and people trying to flock to the United States um, over the past a um, couple decades from Central and South America and wanted to kind of show the universality in that, in that, um, you know, there's there's a lot of people that are willing to, to risk everything to come here. So hopefully people don't take it for granted, um, the great place that we live. Um, anyways, didn't want to get political with it, so I just wanted to tell Lupe's story. And uh, so this is uh, it's called Pray for Rain. <laughs> He came from Mexico So he could try and grow His own American dream He left all he loved behind His new son and wife He was seeking a better life family that Sonoran desert sure was hot but this coyote said it's the best chance not getting caught so we prayed for rain come cool the land take away his pain but the rain never came So we carried on anyway Across the border with no plan But he wasn't scared of work He had two hands so he made some plans Head in San Joaquin He arrived around harvest time but The dust was thick and jobs were hard to find No fruit on the vines in the valley They hadn't seen dirt this dry since 39 all the weather models were calling No wind in sight So we prayed for rain To come cool the land And take away his pain But the rain never came So we 
carried on in Will he finally scrape the money up to send it all back down so his wife could pay the coyote and escape to Hawker Town? So sitting around the table here tonight, think about the men and the women and the children. Just picking to survive. Pray for rain. Pray. That's the great big heart of Zach Dubois in song. That's great. Thank you so much for your coming to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour today. And will you will you do us a favor and, uh, you know, once we open back up, would you think about coming and maybe doing a concert for us? I would love nothing more than that. Anytime you get to come and talk about songs and, and, and play music for people that actually want to listen, I'll be here. <laughs> All right. That's great. Ah. With support from Judith Robert and Tom Kepazinskis, Marshall County Community Foundation, Marshall, Co Marshall County Tourism, and the Friends of the Wild Rose Moon, you've been listening to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Well, thank you to our special guest, Zach DuBois, for his beautiful songs and for making me a great deal on my emergency appendectomy. We also want to thank John Baylor, our music producer, for his beautiful theme music and our Alpha Wolf stage manager, Howard Gibbs, our earnest announcer, Jacob Moreno, and our photographer, Matthew the Bird Moser, although sometimes some of you may know him as Moser Dozer. Thanks also to Nate Butler, co-producer and effervescent sound engineer, our media guru, Jim Yoakum, our tattooist, Mevo engineer, and house musician, Ryan Meir, our video wizard, Jim Yoakum, and our hospitality angel, Jennifer Reed. We'd also like to thank our resident carpenter, Buddha, oh, that's uh, Mark Woolever, and uh, I, we want to give a special shout out to our friend, Gene Pazdurka, out there in Baltimore. We love you and we miss you. Um, we also want to uh, say a few kind words for Paula Hazen, who passed and a wonderful soul who helped us out at the moon so much. She just had a beautiful, beautiful person passed on to the great beyond. Thank you so much, Paula, and Roger, too. And uh, let's see. I must have a line here for you, right? Something about lightning. Uh, That's okay. right, George. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have you got lightning in that thing? <laughs> I already answered. <laughs> <laughs> so when you think you've lost that light, oh yeah, all pain and heartache, you tell us now. Fill your soul with strife. Testify. Just remember, Woo! as you're tumbling down, come on now. It won't be long till Til the, the river goes, goes round. The river goes round, around the bend. bend. The river goes round, round, round till the very end. And when it stops, woo it starts again. It won't be long till the river goes round. It won't be long till the river goes round and round and round, my friend. <laughs>